just excited about the the leadership that we have <clears throat> coming in this year. We just got a lot of veterans coming back from last year's team, um, who seem to have a lot of a lot of great chemistry, and their focus has been on point throughout the course of the fall. So, you know, been in practice for a couple of weeks with our first scrimmage under our belt right now. So there's just a great deal of excitement as we continue the journey and uh, hope to build off of of last year's season and. Um, some near misses and, and hopefully get over the hump sometime this year. Yeah, I think, you know, the Big Ten schedule just, just presents uh, week in and week out challenges. So I think it's important for us to do two things. Uh, one, prepare our guys uh, week in and week out with a challenging schedule uh, that's going to present some of the same issues that, that, that may uh, rear themselves at the end of the season as we enter into the conference schedule, but also give our guys an opportunity uh, maybe to try some things throughout the course of the year and uh, see if we can get into the depth of our team as well. So I think you want to have a balance of a, a well-rested but well-tested team uh, as we walk into the Big Ten. So uh, I think our schedule right now reflects just that. Uh, we've got some, some playoff teams in there and uh, a, a fairly competitive slate early on, and I think that our, our guys will be excited for that, both home and on the road. But I think uh, the bottom line, they'll also be prepared as we go into that uh, that Big Ten schedule to, to make sure that they've uh, had the experience needed both during practice and on those games. You know, there's a great deal of chemistry into this year's season. And, uh, you know, as as a coach, we've been able to kind of step back a little bit. This this group is very mature, especially in the offensive end. There's just a lot of veteran um, either starters or, or guys who have logged in a lot of minutes last year. Even the sophomores are playing like veterans right now. And it's allowed them to have a lot more creativity. It's allowed our coaching staff to maybe step back a little bit and allow these guys to take the reins as leaders and they've done just that. Uh, I think the other the other step and the other side at, at both ends of the field are, are just to, to challenge our guys to take another step. Uh, maybe not to be complacent with where we are or uh, if we have a good day, maybe just to see if we can stretch or challenge our, our guys to maybe have a great day uh, to see how good we can actually be. So, you know, with great leadership, it kind of broadens the scope both in practice and games. And I think with, with the kind of leaders that we have coming back from last year at both ends of the field, um, you know, Peter Triolo as a defensive leader uh, and, a, and a senior returning starter and Danny Craig and Nikki Aponte and, you know, some of the other guys that we've had starting, it's, uh, it's been fun. I can, I can tell you that as a coach because they've really stretched um, both practice and now scrimmage opportunities uh, beyond what, what has gone on here in the last couple of years. So I'm hoping that we can continue to stretch even their own idea about how good they can be. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, chemistry is really important when it's coming to this sport of lacrosse. I mean, we've been playing with each other for the past three and a half years now, and I think that's extremely important. I mean, looking at it as a leadership style, we're just trying to take it day in and day out, absolutely just controlling what we can control with our attitude and effort, just coming to practice every single day, remaining extremely optimistic, and just being there to learn and just being confident and going into the season one game at a time, one win at a time. Offensively, um, I find that it's really easy for um, kind of the core guys to, to be leaders because we've been playing together for so long. Uh, myself, Mike Sutton, Matt Florence, and the rest of our key players up there. Um, it's really easy for us because we've been playing together, starting together for roughly three years. So the chemistry that we have is just continuing, and we're just hoping to, to show that to, young, to the younger guys, and I think they're doing that really, really well. So, so when Connor passed away, uh, we wanted to just reflect on his future and how to carry along that spirit <clears throat> and, and hope that we can carry that spirit along, hopefully long after we, we leave, long after these, these two gentlemen graduate, long after I'm uh, the head coach at Penn State and that, that tradition 
uh, becomes a long-standing tradition, and, and the spirit of Connor Darcy always remains a part of this program. So we stepped back in the summer of, of 2016 when he passed away and allowed that to just uh, marinate with our guys a little bit so that they can come back a little bit more thoughtful and thorough in their thought process about how they wanted to, to honor Connor as it related to his number. And we had talked about retiring the number altogether, <clears throat> um, just throwing it back in the mix. Or what they came up with is each year somebody would wear that and then for the following year, when the season was complete, they would then hand it down to another senior. Um, and it would provide them an opportunity to talk about Connor Darcy, what he meant to them, what the number meant to, to them, uh, what it meant to shoulder that responsibility, but also that spirit. Um, and hopefully through that story, um, it's going to connect from one young man to the next. And, uh, you know, he was a wonderful teammate. And he was a brother and he was a son and, and that is the legacy that we would love to have left behind um, as well as a very competitive player when he was on the field. So hopefully that story will continue to be told year in and year out and hopefully that every time someone not just has the chance to wear it but when these guys see that number running around the field um, it will elicit great memories of a young man that was their teammate but maybe years from now also have the same memories for guys who never had a chance to meet him, to recognize the spirit that's still alive. And, and as they walk into that locker room day in and day out, understand the true spirit or symbol of a young man that once played for Penn State. Yeah, it's a great question. So in practice, we've really tried to pick up the tempo. This past week in, in particular, <clears throat> uh, we got a little bit more depth offensively than, than defensively right now. We've, we've been hit with the injury bug back in the defensive end. So our core guys got a lot of work to do, but we got a lot of, we have a lot of depth uh, through the midfield, especially in the offensive midfield. So we've tried to really pick up the pace and pick up the tempo and get guys in and out a little bit quicker. Uh, this year, I'd say it's, it's probably more analogous to maybe hockey. Uh, the way they, they're in and out, it's not going to be a 30-second shift and get guys out, but we'd like our guys to get in, um, utilize a, a higher tempo or a higher pace going from defense to offense. That puts a lot of pressure on these defensive guys to be able to make, make plays and then turn themselves into offensive players. But when these guys get on the field, the offensive middies, um, we would like to turn them around a little bit more. We feel like we have seven or eight guys at the midfield that can play uh, at a regular clip. Uh, and now four to five attackmen that can also do the same thing. So we want to balance it because we don't want to wear down our defense right now. Uh, but we think we've got a lot of guys to the middle of the field. So we feel like an up-tempo style and maybe just getting our guys in and out a little bit quicker than we did last year is going to keep us fresh, um, but allow us to utilize the depth that we have right now in the offensive end. Yeah, you know, I think at the end of the day, we, we want to use Army like we did Navy as an opportunity to learn. So we, we realize coming out of that Navy scrimmage that we just have a ton to learn. And, and the core objective coming out of that scrimmage, and we'll talk to our guys about it today, is just to get better. So there were some really good things, some positives, and some things that we realized we really have to work on um, through the course of the preseason. But we knew that was going to happen. We're two weeks into the season. Um, Army will present another challenge. And, and some of the things that we talked about going into Navy if you can focus on the effort stats, you know, picking the ball up off the ground, winning face-offs, doing a good job in riding situations, um, some of the hustle plays, then I think we'll, we'll go ahead and move out of there with a positive attitude, knowing that we're moving in the right direction. And, and when you face the academies like Na the Naval Academy and Army, uh, both great teams in their own right, um, you know you're going to get a great uh, competitive effort from both those guys. So if you can, you know, maintain a 50-50 or an edge in those statistics, um, that's how we'll measure ourselves going into that first opponent in our home opener, and hopefully we'll do just that. You know, I think at this point, we're still looking to, to improve on everything. I don't think there's anything that we want to focus on and, and, and take our our sight lines off of other things right now because I think if you if you focus your focus is too narrow uh, when the season is so long you probably miss the boat on so many different elements so uh, 
you know, finding chemistry at both ends of the field is important. We do have some young kids playing in the defensive end right now. At one point, I looked out, and Pete's got, you know, flanking with a freshman to his right, sophomore to his left. Um, and, you know, we got our hands full back there with some younger kids playing. So we're trying to develop some, some chemistry right there. And I think the big thing going into the season is just confidence, just making sure that we come out of this preseason with a great deal of confidence because we, we've prepared hard. And that's what we just want to give our guys a chance to know uh, that they've packed enough in their suitcase to last them, you know, a season long effort. And uh, so I think, you know, going into that game, it's not going to be any one specific either offense or decent defense or detail. It's it's probably more about the broader scope of this season and coming out of there hopefully healthy, but also very confident knowing that we can go in there with the group that we have and, and win every game if we prepare well. You know, I go back to this, confidence is, is huge for Will. Will jumped into that goal last year, two years before we thought he was even going to be considered. We thought this was going to be Connor Darcy's senior year, and here goes Will, um, you know, coming out of the summer, shaken uh, from the loss of his teammate, then having to go into the very crease uh, of a teammate that he replaces. And, and I'm not sure mentally he was where he needed to be throughout the course of the entire year. And to give him Credit we do, we give him a lot of credit. He stood tall in, a, in the majority of games and, and he helped us a great deal. He was, you know, he, he put us in a number of games and a number of situations and, and was never the reason we were ever on the, on the losing side of any game. But I would say that his confidence has grown significantly over the course of the summer and into this fall. And, and I would say that in, in conjunction with uh, the competition that we have, we have two freshmen that, that came in uh, that are really pushing him to be as good as he can be, and they're challenging each other. But it's been a friendly competition, so I think the you know, the combination of that, the confidence, and now the competition has really driven Will a little bit closer to being you know game ready and hopefully prepared and seasoned for this season. Yeah, you know, I, I thought it was just I, – I give I said this when we came over with uh, Danny and Peter. I, the energy um, and, and readiness of our team is just um, at a level that I'm not sure I've seen in the preseason. I think we've been excited to play in certain games because of the name on the opposing team's jersey. Um, but the excitement and confidence coming across the University Ave from this group uh, was something that I have not seen. Uh, from from this team and in the last number of years, if ever, I, I just think they were really prepared, very confident coming over and loose. And I think that translated into the style of play through all classes. I think, you know, when our seniors come out with great confidence and they play very loose, your juniors tend to do the same. Your sophomores tend to follow suit and then your freshmen play, um, you know, with great confidence as well. And I think I give a lot of credit to Danny Peter and the rest of the seniors. They, they, they just, I, I thought they felt ready. And I think the rest of the guys really followed right in behind their wake. And in that first opportunity to put that jersey on, it gives us a chance to see them in, in a game situation. And some of those guys like Mac O'Keefe, Gerard Arceri, Colby Canese, TJ Canellan. Um, I can go down the line from those freshmen, the way they competed and played in a tough situation against a good team. And, and we were very pleased with what we saw. I thought it was just a pretty unique situation. I'll let these guys talk. I would imagine as a player, it's got to be neat too, just just knowing it's one of your former teammates. And, and we've had a chance to to meet him on a couple of different occasions back here. Um, I'm not a Patriot fan, but I'm definitely a Chris Hogan fan. And uh, it's fun to root for him when he scores a touchdown. I know I get excited. And I think it's, it's wonderful for the sport of lacrosse, men's, women's. I just think it's a great connection back to uh, to what the athletes in our – collective sport can do and it's great to see him succeed at, at such a level so I don't know what it's like for these guys to see the same yeah I mean like coach was just saying it's pretty surreal just seeing him out there on the field at, at like such a big stage and just knowing that he was one of us at some point in his life and uh, I think it's really just helps to put in perspective that you can just set you can do anything you set your mind to and I'm really happy for him congrats last night Chris if you're listening uh sorry I mean I'm, I'm a Jets fan so it's a little rough to see him out there on the Patriots sideline but uh really happy for him
I'm not even a football fan, <laughs> like at all. I'm Canadian, but uh, I, I, did, I did watch the game, and uh, like like everybody said here, we're really proud of him. Uh, he represented the brand really well, and hopefully, he can do the same the next game. Decent amount, yeah. and you know, you know yeah. which ones they are. Yeah, they let you know. They, they let you know. I got a family full of Patriot fans, so I, I hear it every every day. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's been a wonderful uh, carryover. You're a little bit concerned coming from summer uh, into the fall, and more concerned maybe from the fall to the winter because it's preseason. But I would say one of the most impressive facets of this year's group is when we left uh, for the winter break, we picked back up and, and did about an hour practice on the Sunday before school started, and the carryover uh, was incredible. And I, I think the retention level and the attention to detail that our upperclassmen have has really filtered down and carried over for the younger guys. So we haven't wasted a lot of time. I feel like we've been very efficient in practice for the most part as we've come into the spring, and, and that's allowed us to work on a lot of different things and not have to constantly go back over what we would consider the basics. And, you know, it, it takes time. It takes time to develop, but I give these guys a lot of credit. Um, they've really taken a different tack this year. It just feels like a very professional approach, uh, and the focus seems to be very sharp. Absolutely. I mean, going to the Super Bowl, I'm definitely going to be a Chris Hogan fan. I mean, it's definitely hard rooting for the Patriots, but like I said, I mean, I got to be out there rooting for Chris. He's, I mean, he played such a great game last night, and we're just so happy to see him do that on such a big stage. But uh, yeah, going to the Super Bowl, I would definitely say I'm a Chris Hogan fan. I'll, I will be a Patriots fan for one day. <laughs> for one. I know. I'm lucky because I'm allowed to play the field. I don't really have a single team. So uh, yeah, obviously we'll be Chris Hogan fans. I know a couple of our guys do have Chris Hogan jerseys, so I think they, <laughs> they, they stepped over the line there and they got Chris Hogan jerseys. I, I know we have an, a lot of them, so I'm sure a lot of guys will be celebrating uh, his success on Super Bowl Sunday. Thank you, Thank you guys.